Hi, it's Miss Parrot, and this video is about photosynthesis. In this video, I'm going to be approaching the topic at like a high school level, early intro to college level. I've got a more basic video for middle school level students that I'll link below. I also have more complicated vid videos about the biochemistry of photosynthesis and cellular respiration, and I'll link those below as well. So we're reaching out for this at the high school level, and if that's you, stay along with us. All right, photosynthesis is the process by which photoautotrophs, that's a kind of organism, that they make their own food from carbon dioxide and water. They're going to do this in the presence of light. Photoautotroph is kind of a big scary word, but we can break that down into its component parts uh, to know like what kind of organism is a photoautotroph. Photo means light, auto means self, and troph means food or source of energy. So a photoautotroph is going to be an organism that makes its own food using energy from light. The process of photosynthesis in eukaryotes happens in the chloroplast. So the eukaryotic organisms we're talking about here are like plants and algae, but photosynthesis also occurs in some prokaryotes, and it does that across the infoldings of cell membranes of some photosynthetic bacteria. So instead of like a solid flat membrane, it like folds in and photosynthesis process is happening uh, across those membranes because you got to have membranes to make photosynthesis happen. This is a picture of a chloroplast. We're going to kind of focus on the eukaryotic process as we move forward through the video. It has two major parts, the thylakoid membrane, which are these kind of stacks, pancake-like stacks of membranes inside, and then the empty space between is called the stroma. It's important to know the two different parts because photosynthesis can be broken down into two major sets of reactions and they happen in different parts of the chloroplast. Chloroplasts have chlorophyll. That's a green pigment that absorbs light energy and turns it into chemical energy. So the chloroplasts are going to be found within the thylakoid membrane. That's where light absorption happens. All right, now let's look at photosynthesis on the big picture. We're gonna look at this in plants. And so plants, of course, generally have a stem, they have roots, and they have leaves. So um, we're gonna start, again, the ingredients going in for photosynthesis, CO2 and water. So water's gonna be absorbed through the roots by osmosis and then it's going to be carried up the roots, through the xylem, up the stem, and taken to the leaves. We're going to get um, CO2 in through the leaves. Leaves have three major parts. The top of the leaf, which is where light absorption happens, uh, that's called the upper epidermis. It also has a waxy cuticle over the top of the leaf to help prevent desiccation or dehydration. In the middle of the leaf, you're going to find the spongy mesophyll. These are specific types of cells that have the majority of your chloroplast where photosynthesis is going to be happening. And then again, the bottom of the leaf, uh, which has these little holes in them called stomata. Stomata are surrounded by two cells called guard cells, and they swell and shrink to open and close to allow CO2 in and oxygen out at different times of the day. So we got water coming in the leaf through the roots, CO2 coming in through the stomata. Glucose, that's going to be the food, the chemical energy that's being made, is going to happen. Uh, it's going to be made in the chloroplast. And then the waste product is actually oxygen gas the chloroplasts are going to release that and it's going to come out of the stomata from the leaves.
Now photosynthesis is actually a huge series of chemical reactions, but a lot of times you'll see it as a very simplified reaction, carbon dioxide plus water in the presence of light and chlorophyll makes glucose and oxygen. So this is a nice little neat net reaction and we can balance this chemical equation um, using the skills that we've learned previously. So let's do that real quick. We first list our elements on each side of the arrow, carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen, and count how many are on each side. So we've got one carbon, two hydrogens, and one, two, three oxygens on the reactant side. On the product side, we have six carbon, 12 oxygen, and six plus two is a, I mean six, 12 hydrogen, and eight oxygen. One thing I see that's a quick and easy way to start off, if I have six carbons over here, I could add a six right here, which now gives me six carbons, but my oxygens increase as well. Six times two is 12, plus one right here is 13. My carbons are balanced. Now I can easily balance my hydrogens by putting a six right here as the coefficient in front of water because six times two is 12. And now my hydrogens are balanced, but my oxygens are still off. Right now I've got six times two is 12, plus six is 18 oxygens on the reactant side, but only eight over here. So I've got six. Is there something I could put right here to balance them out? And if I put a six here, that gives me 12 oxygen atoms right here, plus six is 18. And now my equation is balanced. Like I said, this is the very simplistic version. So since we're at a higher level, let's break it down into the more complicated uh, chemical processes. Again, I get really, really detailed in my set of videos called Principles Governing Metabolic Pathways. So this is even a simpler version than that. We can break photosynthesis down, if this is our chloroplast, into the light reactions and the light independent reactions or the Calvin cycle. The light reactions happen in the thylakoid membrane. So this is where our chlorophyll is. Light is going to come towards the leaf. It's going to come to the, chloropl uh, to the chloroplast. And chlorophyll molecules in the thylakoid membrane are going to absorb that light. Water is coming into the thylakoid membrane. And basically, very fundamentally, what's happening is it's splitting the hydrogens and you know the protons and electrons off of water like from hydrogen and leaving the oxygens then the oxygens will pair up and they will leave as O2 gas out of the leaf also what's happening is there are there's ADP an inorganic phosphate that's being joined together to make ATP that's an energy molecule and then NADP plus is joining with the electrons to make NADPH and that is also an electron donor something that's going to power the Calvin cycle which is the next step of photosynthesis. So coming in we've got water and light coming out of the light reactions we have oxygen, ATP and NADPH. ATP and NADPH are going to go out into the stroma and that's where the Calvin cycle is going to occur. In the Calvin cycle, CO2 is going to come in and we need to like take those carbon, oxygens, and hydrogens and stick them all together. To synthesize molecules, we need energy and we're getting that energy from ATP and NADPH. So it's going to put all those atoms together to make glucose, which is our big goal, right? Taking light energy and turning it into chemical energy. So we've got C6H12O6, that's going to go out 
into the cell um, and be carried throughout the rest of the plant to give it the energy it needs to exist and live. But we will have like powered down the ATP and NADPH. So ATP is now ADP, adenosine diphosphate, and one lonely inorganic phosphate. Those will go back to the light reactions and NADPH is now NADP+. Those will go back to the light reactions to get powered up again for use again in the Calvin cycle. So it's like they just go back and forth over and over. So this is where our water and carbon dioxide come into two different steps of photosynthesis and produce our oxygen and our goal, chemical energy, glucose.